Namaskaram. Namaskaram. I have a sister. She's a little bit older than me. I don't say I don't love her. I love her. It's fine. But from the childhood, always it was like I felt like my free will is like uh, violated. She was always worrying about me. Like, uh, what what people say, idiot? You idiot. What people say about you? Like insecurity all the time. And that insecurity she was putting on me all the time. I was resisting, I was hating her like this, but there is a boundary we can't cross. Like if we cross a little bit, we just fight. Like, so we, I tried apologize, I apologized everything. She's very proud, she will never, like, I tried for my side, but I felt like it, it doesn't work, something is wrong. A few months ago, I just told her, I don't want to have anything with you. I don't want to know how you feel, how you live. I just want to cut you from life totally. And when you uh, speak about surrender practice, if I try to be within me, I don't want her anywhere close to me. She, she, she should not exist. Otherwise, the influence will be there. Like, it's so deep within me. Am I did uh, writing to cut the relationship, to tell the, her, the, her the truth about how I feel? So the question is, uh, is it like in, in some Mahabharata you read, like, Oh, the sisters, you always should listen to your sisters, like older, you know, brothers. I feel, no, it's wild, it's my free will. I, I want to laugh. I, I don't want to be measured, like, in my expressions. So... The more you are in surrender to the truth, to the, to the Antar Guru, you go then with the impulse of the truth, mm. not with the noise of the ego. Mm which means you have to train yourself to ask always, is this action, this urge to action, is it arising from the truth or is it coming from that loud noise of the ego? That is your sadhana or your practice. If you undertake that practice as often as possible, because you have this major kundalini disturbance, it's not a small thing, so you can't mess around lifelong, you know. It will put you in your place each time. So. If you start to take up that sadhana, gradually what happens is that you start to tune into yourself, to the Guru, to the, to the Atman, Antaratman, the soul within. And as you tune into that, you also tune into the soul of the other because it's the same thing. Mm. So those barriers between you and the other, they dissolve. And if it is somebody who is essentially not supportive of your system, they will just disappear. They won't be around you. Thank God, thank God. <laughs> no, but that first you have to do the practice, no? Yeah. God is not around until you do the practice. You forgot that part, right? Yeah. The second part is nice, but the first part is the challenge. The other thing is, if you start to look at everybody in the world as yours. Then why is your sister different from her? Of course, I understand a woman-male relationship is one thing and sister-brother, but you can also have a hundred other sisters, no? But I what, believe, is, what, what is so different? Does she have some special uh, something? Maya, I don't know. It, it feel, I, from my early childhood, I felt like authority of her. Mother says something, that's okay, I, I can listen, I can do. But when she says, it's, she's strong, like... She might say anything, but tomorrow she might also say something to you, if you're lucky. <laughs> then she might say something as powerful. My point is that you are looking at her as your sister and your... the blood connection yes, and yes. this and that. Why? Why? In any case, you don't owe anything to your sister. Mm. Spiritually seen, the only thing you owe to anyone is to your parents to ensure that they are physically taken care of, not even their emotional needs, because there's no end to the emotional needs of parents, but that they have comfortable physical care, that is very crucial, and you owe your, your care to the children, to your parents and to your children, not to your siblings. So if you, if you don't want to deal with her, first you have to deal with 
your master within, because otherwise she's going to be around to keep on torturing you. You can't get rid of her just because you make a decision. It doesn't work that way. Uh, Where is the bending? Where is the surrender? You know what I mean? Yes. That's the point, that's the key. You won't be left in peace, not just by your sister, but by anything in life, until that ego starts to bend down. Or rather, you start to bend and stop listening to the ego and go with the truth. This idea of being powerful, you know, mm. that you get every once in a while. You know what I mean? If you don't move in the direction of surrender, that... that movement of the Shakti will become more and more challenging. Okay. You don't have any time to lose. It's not like maybe her or her, they, they don't have that thing, so they, they can take that time, but not you. How old are you? Thirty-one. Yes, I mean, you're not a baby anymore, mm. so... No? You know what I mean? Even if you decide you don't want to deal with your sister, she'll turn up again. Until you bend to the truth. Do you know the difference between the truth impulse and the ego noise? Yeah, I'm trying to... I, 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 I can say I'm successful to see that. Yeah, I know. So then, you don't go with the truth always, right? Some, you know, some, uh, what is English, this word called, like, inert, like... Yeah, I'm like a dog who Inertia. was caged all the time, who mm. was caged in his life, and now he's just free them. Ah, he just wants, you know, uh, to get a little bit loose. But why I were you caged? Do. What do you mean? How are you differently caged from her or her or him or...? I can't stand this when somebody is just with other people, just trying to get from their support against you. I, 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 I can't stand this. But you're a 31 year old. What is this big thing about your sister? It's not now. It, it was from. But now it's time to let it go. No, it's a past story, right? Yes, yes. Why do you want to hold on to it and put pampers on it and comb its hair no, and no, put? No, 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 no. And feed it food every day. Just leave it. It's past tense. Either you psychologize your whole life and keep on looking at all the things that went wrong, or you spiritualize your life and then it's just this moment that counts. Augustinas yes. is your name. Yes. Nas. Nas. Augustinas, Nas. yeah. Yes. So either you can go back and look into the past and my mother did this and my sister did that and this one. Every single person sitting in this room will have that many traumas as you. Everyone will have... because it is always relative to a person's situation. There was a Bengali girl, she had a huge trauma and she just couldn't get over it. And the trauma was that her mother, when she used to make breakfast, used to give the older sister the bigger egg. <laughs> it's a true story. And she's gone through her whole life traumatized by that. <laughs> so... <laughs> you know, I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not commenting on this. <laughs> I'm not comparing your trauma to that, but I'm saying it's relative, you know. Some people will have a trauma because they, they lost their arm or leg, and the same kilos of trauma the other one will have because they got the smaller egg. It's real trauma she was going through. So either you leave that, or just leave it behind from this moment on. Nothing to discuss or think about the sister. Sister is sister, okay, all good. Who are you is the question. So I'm not responsible, like karmically something responsible for your... No. No, that's good, thank you, thank you. Yeah. I just want to express myself without uh, uh, measure, like, oh, am I looking good in front of the people? Are they judging me? I don't want this, I just want to be free. Now be free then, right now. Okay. Just be free. Okay. Because anyways, whatever you say, somebody or the other is going to think you're strange. Mm. That is how life is. So then... I'm, I don't actually very much care about what others say, but that one person, I don't know how, but that one person, like, 
It's over now, no? We already yeah. decided. She's gone. <laughs> Whenever that, that discussion comes, keep quiet, no mm. talk. Yes, yes, yes. How are you? Oh, you're fine. Oh, really? Nice. Can I get you something to eat, to drink? No? Okay, silence. Mm. No talk. Why do you need to discuss anything with her? It's about inheritance. Oh, you're getting more than me. How sad. Hmm. That's it. There's nothing to talk about further than that. With someone who causes you distress like that, there's no discussion. No discussion, no talk. How do you feel? How do I feel? You did this to me when we were three years old, so now I do this. It's all nonsense. Life is very short if you're going to focus on the traumas of 20 years back and try to continuously try to, to clear it up. You, you won't be able to live this moment. I then in 20 years, you'll go back to clear this moment because you would be traumatized because you were not living in this moment. It's just a waste of time. Yeah, I understand, fully understand. Yes. Yeah. Fully, gather the strength, don't be afraid. Don't get into discussions with people who hurt you. It doesn't make any sense. But don't be rude, don't be nasty, silence. Yes. No opening the mouth. Mm. Head down in surrender to the truth and silence. Unless the truth tells you to say something, which it won't do. Pull together the strength to do that. But that, that truth within me told me that I should say the truth to her, how I feel. I, I don't think your truth within you speaks to you. This is your ego. The truth doesn't speak, it's an impulse. It doesn't have any need for you to speak to anybody because it doesn't have any needs. It is a cosmic impulse, it's not a, a, a voice of need. Oh, my truth told me, my soul told me to go to the Bahamas. No, it doesn't tell you to do things. It's a, it's a cosmic impulse, it's binary in nature, it's only yes or no, positive or negative. And once you start feeling it, like a small baby, you start acting from it, except because you're socialized, you don't do things like pee on the floor or something, you know? So it's not a voice telling you, Augustinas, now tell her how you feel. How? What does one achieve by talking like that? I didn't say I don't want to talk to you again. Okay? Whatever you truth. said. How what is the truth? How you feel? Okay, and now? Do you feel different after telling me? Actually, her? I feel little release. Little. It'll come back. It'll build up again. This is not the way to deal with that situation. Because she will feel hurt if you tell her that. Because she doesn't understand. You, you might express anything to the other, but that doesn't mean that they understand what you're saying. They don't understand most of the time. Even if you talk to, even if you ask someone to, to, you buy an apple, he doesn't understand what you're saying. Even if you speak the same language. It's a very difficult thing for two human beings to communicate with each other. So what's the point of telling her, you have hurt me and I didn't feel this and you traumatized me and... You think she's going to like that? I think the answer is no. I just need apology. Simple. What you need is inconsequential to anybody in this world, to anyone in this room. What you need, nobody cares. And definitely not your sister. So how do you assume that you have the right to get an apology from her? And how do you assume to get it in the first place? First, we would like to talk. We, we are not enemies. More, some, some of the time we are very close to each other. Either you talk or you don't talk. If you talk, that's what will happen. If you don't talk, there'll be peace. I'm not saying not to talk at all. How are you? Oh, the weather is very nice today. Hmm, it's very sunny, isn't it? Like people in villages, have you noticed how they talk to each other? They don't go into deep emotional discussions. They, they meet each other on the street, hmm, sun is very hot today. You can see it in every village in the world, every village. They only talk like that, whether it's Tamil Nadu, or it's in Pondicherry, or it's in Switzerland, or it's in America, or it's in Australia. In the village, it's... First they talk about the weather, then they talk about their cars. Ah, nice, and what is this, something new? That's it. If it's women, they talk about 
maybe the, the, the fruits that they just collected from a secret place which the other ones don't know, wild things or mushrooms they collected or something, and then they talk about the weather, obviously, which is an amazing thing to talk about, because we all depend on that. Talk about the weather with her. <laughs> Tell her her makeup is very nice. And keep it at that. There's nothing more to discuss. You want an apology from somebody? Why? Why should she give you an apology? Tell me. Because what reason? If, if there is, if <laughs> I feel within myself, if if I get apology, I, I just hug her. It's, it's everything. But that's it's, you. It's, it's fine. But it's you. She doesn't want that. She doesn't want that. The world doesn't want what you want. So it's better it's not the to other talk. way around. Yeah, no, it's better to be centered, to be quiet, to talk about the weather, to talk about how beautiful she looks. And uh, the moment she starts telling you something about yourself, head down, move in with the truth. That's it. This is how one has to live in this life, with everyone. It's... What deep talks do you want to have with your sister? It's ridiculous. One shouldn't have deep talks with anybody, actually. One should have deep communion with the soul, and then all the talks become sweetness. Just about the weather and about... You see the beauty in the other one then. You see the sweetness in the other, and then the whole talk goes to that. Yes, you can have deep philosophical discussions with somebody who is attuned with you. You are attached to her. How can you be attached to her and no self? Doesn't work. Some part of me was always like keeping her as, as a mother, you know, like she's a little more older than me. I loved her all the time, even now, but can't. If you don't do it, life makes you do it. You have to make that decision not to get into those discussions with her, but to respect her for who she is and her beauty and her... and her... that there's a soul in there, like there is within you. If you can't see that, then it's your fault, not hers. You have to change. Why... why do you want her to change? She has to apologize to me, but why? Why? Then we can speak again. But she doesn't want to apologize to you. Then we don't speak. Exactly what I'm telling you. It's fine with me, it's fine with me. When you don't speak, then she'll start speaking. Maybe. <laughs> You're attached to this idea of how she should be. She's not like that. She is not like that. Period. Don't be attached to how people have to be with you. You be attached to the Source, be in that state. I'm not here to, to present you psychological possibilities of therapy with her. That's not what happens in a place like this. This is an individual thing, you and the Soul. You and the Source. The more you bend, the more she will change. Or she will move out of your situation. Yeah... One thing... I just finished <laughs> quickly, okay? Take your time. There is... If someone wants to interrupt this discourse, then you have to put your hand up and ask to take another question. <laughs> and otherwise, we will be discovering all the facets of Augustina's system. Sorry, Ma, I'm torturing you this three I'm a, <laughs> You have the right to speak, it's an open satsang, you can ask anything you want. So please feel free, feel free, since you want freedom. Here it is, now feel free and speak. I felt when I started the spiritual process, there are some rules I have to follow, like I felt within myself, I don't feel good when I talk about behind other people's backs. She's doing that. And this commenting, commenting, it's, it's like a disease. But I love her, it's, it's... Well, why don't you love her? What is the difference, finally, between your sister and any of the beautiful women sitting here as sisters, even if not other things, which should better be that, but maybe okay. Maybe some karmic, I don't know, maybe some karmic thing. Who knows? Everything is a karmic thing. Everyone is connected to each other karmically on this planet. Everyone. I would like to hug everybody, it's no problem. <laughs> but you don't have to hug somebody to feel connected. That's kumbaya. <laughs> if you want to feel deep connection with the other, 
you don't have to hug them for that. Yes, because that is only a connection on a material, physical level. And in fact, it sometimes negates the other levels of connection that there can be. I understand that you're a huggy type, but still. <laughs> the only disturbance after that, I don't know, not much huggy, huggy type. <laughs> Because why? You know why? Because technically the Kundalini Shakti is trying to teach you something. And what it's trying to teach you is that when too much of Hagi Hagi stuff goes on, the energies get equalized between two people. And when those energies get equalized, the one who's building up Tapas Shakti loses it to the other person who has not built it up. That is all right in an egalitarian... I mean, if you're in France, then that would be okay because it's egalité and fraternité and liberté and all that. But it is not the way necessarily to be in a spiritual community, because finally that equalizing goes on and then some people, they take up a lot of tapas and others don't do anything. And this equalizing is not good for the one who hasn't done anything, because they receive energy, but they're unable to hold it. So hugging is not a bad thing, but it's all right if you don't hug all the time, everyone and and I'm and do sorry, kumbaya. I'm not that like physically. I, I can hug it within, within my heart. It's within, oh, now it's yeah. changed to the heart. Ah, okay. No, I'm not lying. I'm. Augustinus, I have to tell you something. Yeah. When I say this, then you say yes, you're doing that already. Then I say ah, oh, okay. Then everything is fine. Then you come up with something else. Then I say ah, oh, then you should do this. Then you say I'm doing that already. But it's not like that. Let me try to explain to you, so you can maybe feel free of this uh, okay. strange connection with your sister. Nobody in this world goes into a communication with another, or should go into a communication with another, when it causes so much pain. It is not okay to do that to yourself. Mm. So sometimes it's painful to say no. It needs discipline, because everybody likes to gossip with people that they are familiar with. And almost everybody has fights with their siblings. It's because of this reason. If you're on the same spiritual path, you can discuss about your journey or about your experience but as little as possible. It's always better. But that is different. She's not on the same path as you. She doesn't even understand what you have in your body. If you don't take the discipline not to speak to her unnecessarily, you will always be hurt by her. Mm. And you'll be sitting here and crying after 10 years also. Be a man, stand up and say, no, enough is enough now. That's what men are, they can make strong decisions. I did it, two months ago. <laughs> There you go, once more you're saying, I did it, but you haven't done it. Because you're here sitting and, and crying about it. I'm not saying you shouldn't cry, that's not what I mean. But you are crying about it. So you haven't done it. Now you can do it. It's a strong, internal, tough decision to make. I will not engage in any conversations that go beyond the weather, her makeup, uh, if she has children, how lovely they are, uh, what she cooked for breakfast or what her husband cooked for her, if she's a tough sort, normally it's the men who do that nowadays, <laughs> fully fine, all good, all good, I like that, it's, it's nice, it's okay sharing. But the point is that there's no talk about anything else. Okay. But are you ready to... to just be tough? Why, of course, yes, I just need that you're... I felt that way, but <laughs> okay. I, I was not cor courageous enough, you know. Maybe, maybe I blame myself a little bit for what I said, like that. Like people say, you have to keep your relation with your siblings. You must. You know, this is your karmic duty. That nonsense was deep in, in within me, and you just. A spiritual seeker doesn't have to keep relations with anybody. That's cool. A spiritual seeker has a duty towards the parents for their material comfort. Mm -hmm. Because you can't satisfy parents' emotional needs, it's not possible. Their needs are always more than what you can do. Mm -hmm. But their material comfort, are they okay? Do they have enough... do they have a proper roof? Are they comfortable? 
do they have enough of whatever they need that is a dharmic duty but not if the if there's a complaint you don't talk to me enough or you don't love me enough and all no it's good you don't owe that to anyone you only are in surrender all the time and the truth will tell you what you have to do and what you have to undertake and to the siblings no no it's the parents duty to take care of the siblings they're not your children your children yes very very strongly so mm -hmm. your partner yes siblings often interfere with the partnership of their other sibling and they cause trouble between the partners siblings unless they are very sensitive and very transformed keep them at a nice distance weather beauty makeup <laughs> cooking <laughs> which movie did you see and don't go into the details of the movie because you won't agree mm. <laughs> got it it's a it's a decision it's a a spiritual seeker has to take strong decisions otherwise they're there wavering always between all kinds of things no and you'll see it'll be better in the long run for both of you yes